There you go. See how nice he is? His posture got better and everything else. He's been eating too much pizza. He's starting to slouch. Sit straight like I told you. And, uh, Look, these are my little friends. Oh, that we, she didn't wear her hair today. What the hell? I, I never fit in. She decided, people used to say to me for years, you must be Italian because you make good pizza. I got so damn sick and tired of hearing it. They had this sign made up. It says, Jews make the best pizza. <laughs> to Chicago, but I've heard about the pizza. I'm from Brooklyn, so this style is clearly different from what I grew up with. But I'm open to China. Anyway. I thought Chicago was a one-note pizza city. It was deep dish or bust. But I quickly learned the opposite. This city's pizza game is on point. If you want a crash course in Chicago history and deep dish pizza, you got to go see Tim Samuelson. It's a great pizza culture, that's, uh, that's yeah, for sure. sure. And as you can see, I have a lot of research. <laughs> oh, I have too, I have too. All right, enough talking about enough this. Enough talking. Let's eat it. And here it is, the original the, pizzeria one. The real thing came out of the same place where it was invented in 1943. Pizza lesson. You can see the taper of the crust. The crust is at the bottom, but you see that line right there? Oh, yeah. That solid mozzarella. That's and then piled on top of that, sausage, and then you have the tomato sauce on top. It's built upside down. It's beautiful. Mm. Even though there's a lot going on, the ratios are good. You still taste the sausage, you taste the cheese, you taste the crust. It's kind of basic, no nonsense, yeah. but there's still an art how you put it together. In Brooklyn and Long Island, where I grew up, pizza was a very big thing. And there was always this competition between New York and Chicago as yeah. far as the pizza thing goes, which, you know, they're very different styles. What does this pizza mean to the city? It's actually become one of the great symbols of the city. So when you mention Chicago, it's something that people think of. And there is kind of an interesting, almost a Midwest aspect, kind of the hearty meal Midwest. Totally. Five months out of the year, it's a cold city. I mean, this pizza couldn't have been invented in California. Bingo. <laughs> I grew up in Chicago. I've been here all my life. There always was an energy about it. Chicago was a city where almost everybody came from somewhere else. Chicago was a city that kind of grew out of nothing. So there was no set traditions on how you should do anything. And so that gives the idea that you could improvise this kind of food. So it's a real Chicago story. If you're going to tell the story of Chicago pizza, the king creator is Rick Ricardo. And Rick Ricardo, in 1943, opens a bar there and tries to figure out an interesting thing for kind of bar food to go along with the drinks. The Pizzeria Uno is the descendant of that original pizzeria. If there is the crown prince royalty of pizza, that's the Melnati's. So, I mean, pizza's in the Melnati's blood. Lou Melnati worked under his father, Rudy, in the early days of Pizzeria Uno. He grew up in the pizzeria and eventually went on to open his own place, Lou Malinati's in Lincolnwood. Now with over 40 locations, it's hard not to run into a Lou Malinati's. Despite its growth, Malinati's is still family owned and operated by Lou's son, Mark. So we're gonna talk about pizza for a little while and then we're gonna make some. If you're up, if you're up for it, then I'm up for it. Well, I'm from New York and I don't really, this is my first time in Chicago. So you need directions. What is the Chicago deep dish pizza all about? Well, the Chicago deep dish pizza is different than New York pizza or other pizza. Because it, Chicago, you know, it's a different kind of town. This is a town where you want a whole meal on a plate. And that's what deep dish pizza is all about. You don't want me to say anything about how bad New York pizza is? Well, yeah, let's, let's, I, I mean, we can talk about New York pizza. But if you start to say that it's bad, <laughs> then I'm going to come at you with some stuff, too. So I, hope you got, I hope you got some thick skin. <laughs> You know, this dough wants, it doesn't want to be abused. It doesn't want to be, you know, fondled too much. Because it's going to come out light and flaky. And, and so now we're just going to take it and we're just going to kind of work it. I want you to work it all the way to the sides. When did you get into the business? I started at 15. But I, full time, I went right out of college, 22. So you're, you're a piece of life, right? This has been your only job? It is. I'm, I'm unemployable. Yeah. <laughs> so. And now, just kind of use your fingers and pull it up, but don't break it. Only rookies put holes in it. We're not going to make any rookie mistakes today. Right. It's on amateur night. This is Wisconsin mozzarella. Okay. Now, why do you imagine that I use the cheese as a base? 
because the cheese is going to act as a sealant on the bottom here. So all the sausage fat doesn't sort of seep through and make the crust on the bottom soggy. I think that's true. And the other reason is it's going to be a hell of a lot easier for us to buy the sausage to the pizza with a flat, sturdy base of cheese. Right. What were the early days like here? Opening day was 1971 in Lincolnwood, Illinois. I was 15, and I invited a bunch of my friends to come over and just kind of help in case we got busy. Well, before the doors opened, there were people lined up down the sidewalk, around the corner. It was like Disney World was opening. Wow. And it, it stayed like that for months. You see the size of these tomatoes? Very plump. Are they broken by hand at all or just kind of? I'm going to break them a little bit. Mm. Uh, how good is that? They're really delicious. Huh? You taste the sugar no, just popping out of them? I do. We're going to give it a nice little coating. We're going in. Ready? We're going in, baby. Let's do it. Here we go. And we'll check back in about 25 minutes. Pull that out. All right. Mm. Look at that. That looks great. Yeah. A uh, little bit of stretch. At least some more. much to ask for a New Yorker to eat it with a knife and fork? You know what? I'm Sicilian, so we I come from a place where we cook pizza in pans, you know, and we do sauce on the top. This isn't so far from my universe, you know? Beautiful. So I really so do. So we can agree. We can agree. We can agree. Uh, <laughs> instead of brawling, we're hugging at the end. Uh, That's a good thing. Well, pizza toast. Salud. Salud. Chicago and deep dish go hand in hand, but there's another style that's just as popular amongst the locals. Chicago is a thin crust town, and if you asked any old-timer regular that came in here that what kind of pizza is Chicago, they'd be thin crust. Steve Delinsky, a.k.a. the Hungry Hound, is a Chicago food personality who just ranked 76 pizzerias. It sounds great on paper. I'm going to eat pizzas for two months. That's all I'm going to eat. Yeah, my family though, thought it was crazy. I was bringing pizzas home every night. I'm like, here, you got to try this one. So coming to Chicago, I really just thought it was going to be deep dish. So I'm kind of excited to try all these different styles of pizza. Well, I commend you for getting outside of the downtown area. Because everybody comes to Chicago, they spend all their time in a six-block radius. And they eat deep dish and stuff. And then you get out into the actual neighborhoods of Chicago, like you have. And you see the real pizza, which is tavern-style, thin, crispy crust, square cut. This is a very Chicago thing. We started working class neighborhoods. And it's like a finger food, right? It was meant to be at the bar, so you're drinking, and you could just pick it up and eat it yeah. quickly. Well, this is Vito and Nick's, and it is, you know, true tavern style, Chicago legend. It's always on the top five, top ten list of anybody who does a pizza roundup in Chicago. Been here for 70 plus years. Rose is still the back in the kitchen almost every day. Ooh. All right, yeah. now we're talking. That's perfect. Thank you very much, Rose. Ooh, Beautiful. Look at that sausage. sausage. Oregano. I yeah. love looking at these bubbles. It's, yeah, just go for it. Me happy. I like the end pieces. I like the little crispy end. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of flavor in each one. There's just enough cheese. Really nice thin crust, but it's really crispy and really holds up to the toppings on it. Totally holds up to the toppings. Doesn't overwhelm it. I kind of can't stop eating it right now. Oh, me and you are going to crush this pot when I time this interview. Oh, no. That's for sure. Yeah. had a tavern on the west side in 1920. And then the pizza began when my father came back from World War II. Why then? Well, my, my father had said to my grandmother, you know, telling her about this pizza, well, she's been making it different, thicker, rectangular, just right. like you're used to the Sicilian yeah. pizza. Yeah. So he decided to make it thin, and it's grown and grown and grown. You have to push them in. You want to kind of almost smash it so it stays in here. 
at the first place when you guys first started making pizza? And you well, started I was getting... making pizza when I was very young. Yeah. I started cooking with my grandmother. I was like five or six years old. So you do quite a bit of the cooking. I do quite a bit. Doesn't make a difference. Whatever you gotta be, that's where you go. So you started with a little bit of cheese and you ended with a little bit of cheese. And on the top. Mm -hmm. Just okay. for your regular. All right. Give it a generous amount. Generous amount. A little bit yes, more than that. Coming in. Okay. Right there in the center. Right here? Yeah. <laughs> Bang it on the counter. Yeah. Then that tells them you're going to throw a board. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh, what's your day to day like? Uh, I come down here. I start cooking. What time do you wake up usually? Well, today I started at 3. So I came down and I made bread pudding. <laughs> I mean, that's, I'll start things like that. Well, okay, let me give you a hug. <laughs> so then you have to start your day, right? Oh, yeah. I'll do dough or whatever has to be done. So sauce. you make the pizza dough? Primarily, I do the dough a lot. This is the dough pooping. Oh, wow. I smell Look at all yeast. those bubbles. I smell this it. This was made last night. It was shut down hard. This will be gone by the end of the night. We make it every day. I make my own wine. Wow. So when you're not making pizza and you're not making bread pudding, you're making your wine? Yeah, here's a little scotch. This is I it? Have an M. That's one. Take it. Enjoy. Oh, we're going to have some fun tonight, boys. The south side of Chicago is associated with more of rougher neighborhoods, right? Working class. North side people, when they come in, you can pick them up. Yeah. Instantly. Just the way they look like the deer in the night. <laughs> they, they come in, I think, expecting something different. Right, right, right. I really do believe that. Because okay. you're on the tops of all the lists and everything, so they expect it to be like a really fancy place. They don't realize what this place is about. It's about family and character and it's exactly really what good it is. food. We have families all the time in here. And you'll have, I have seen three or four generations, maybe more. They feel like they're at home. And that's really true. It's a wonderful thing. Steve also told me about another one of his favorite pizzerias, Freddy's in Cicero, just eight miles outside of the city. This place is run by Joe Quercia, and when I walked in, I felt right at home. The horns, Sicilian playing cards, all the stuff that Italian record stores have, I think me and Joe are going to get along. We're going to see more stuff out Hey, Francesco, piacere. Piacere mio. This stuff all looks amazing. I mean, obviously, you make it all fresh every day, Every right? day, every day. And then we make our own homemade bread. What do we have over here? This is something that... This is timbalo. Timbalo. Yeah, that's my version of like we make in the South. The macaroni pie. Correct. And of course, we put these. Your story coming here to America and, and working at Freddy's, where did it all... Where did well, it, all it started, there was in 1968. Uh, well, I came here from Naples, and we lived in Cicero. At that time, I was about 13 years old. Somehow... Uh, my dad asked me if uh, I could go with him to a uh, storm. Somehow on the way back, we took a different direction. We got lost. So I just happened to see there was a sign outside that says Freddy's Italian Lemonade. So I said, oh, my God, somebody's got to speak Italian here to give us the right direction. So I walked in, and I, I asked the man the directions, and plus I asked for the job. I worked for five years, and the place was up for sale. I, I just graduated from high school, and I put some money together. And you I were only 18, 19 years old. I was 19 years old when I bought it. This is my only job in this country. That was wow. it. And so were you the main pizza man back then? Yes, I was making all the pizzas, and I still make some. This is the, we call it bakery style, Sicilian style. Yeah, so, this so, is like uh, very much like a New York style Sicilian yeah. pizza. How many different pizzas do you make here? This is one. Okay. Then we have this one here. This is a round deep dish. Okay, this is a fresh sausage. Wow. No pre-cooked. This is what I think of when I think of Chicago pizza. Yes. Now, this is the, we call it the Chicago style. And we use a fresh sausage on top. Now, this is, to me, is a skill in it in itself, the way he's breaking yeah. up the sausage, you know? This is the margarita style. Okay. Okay, try to stretch it out. You know how to do it. Oh, it still feels good. He has the, the dough proofing, which I really like because it adds uh, it, it, it adds sponginess to it. If you stretch it and you let it wait, like, you know, even 10, 15 minutes, you make so much difference. Best thing is simplicity. It will be the dough, the fresh mozzarella, and the tomatoes. That's what makes it all together. Yeah. This okay. is my pizza. How'd I do? Good. <laughs> Put a little basil on top. That's it. You want to have a slice now? Sure, later? sure. Okay. Oh, uh, now you're talking my language. Fried calamari right on top of the pizza. Can we convince you to open up one of these in Brooklyn? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you ever think about the fried calamari on top? No. It's nice and delicious. 
This is the best breakfast I've had all week. <laughs> your place because it's not your traditional pizzeria you can come in and you can get something that is a restaurant quality dish or you could just have a slice a simple slice of pizza it's not easy but you know when you enjoy doing this and and of course at the end of the week it's uh, uh rewarding why not uh, we have a great life i have a great wife and can ask for more than that i worked at a bank and it was real busy and i was a student and i just wanted to go home and my mother turned the car around and said i want one of those pizzas and we're going there so I came in here to order a pizza. So then he started talking to me, and the pizza was taking forever. And I was getting a little aggravated. So he said, do you have a boyfriend? Said, well, if you don't have a boyfriend, I want your phone number. I said, fine. Here's my phone number. Can I please buy my pizza? I really have to go. Joe called me a week later. I think I called him John. He called. So I just said, look, I'm really busy. don't really have time for anyone's BS. I said, no, let's just go out. And I took her to the Playboy club we had something to eat we danced we had an interesting evening we also take dancing lessons three times a week oh we do uh the cha-cha the rumba the tango waltz salsa it's really interesting really nice one two three one. we tried bowling and then Joe pulled his back and I pulled my shoulder and my neck, okay, so. No, if they get done working, you want to have a little recreation. You just don't want to go home, sit around, and so we figured dancing, which is nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, better. 10, 11, 12. feeling terrific right now. I'm feeling like I'm starting to get it down. At first, a little stiff, but okay. Vito's quite okay. pro. First, another thing is too, Frank. The shoes you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Gotta go. Yeah, I got, I got kitchen clogs okay. on right now. Feel the shoe. Just feel it. Wow. Grab it, grab it. See? Yeah, yeah. Now, that shoe is a part of my foot. You're right, walking on right. an object. Right, right, right. It may right. as well be like two, two by fours. You're walking on two, two Should I just fours. lose them? Go on my socks? If you want to. All right, why not? Why not? Now, yes. here goes the box now. Walk. Here, your ankles will call me. Everywhere you go, your ankles will call me. Good. Much better. And push your hips down. Push them down and lift the weight right out of your middle. Right out of your middle. That's it. See there? Not used to this pose. Push the hips down. All right, all right. Okay, come off. Give me your left hand. I keep the strength that you have in your right hand. Touch me with my left hand. Okay. Now, walk me with the box step. Better? Very nice. You are you are quite the teacher. <laughs> he's a Practice pro. with more. Yeah. Do I have hope? I do. Oh, yeah, he's got. Oh yes. All right. All right. You can feel yeah. it. In the yeah. Oh yes. This guy is a genius. I can't think of a better thing to do with uh, an hour out of your day. You just kind of come down to the ballroom and do the cha cha cha. There's one guy in Chicago that's as legendary as his pizza. Bert Katz. Bert and his wife Sharon opened Bert's place in the 1980s. After five decades in the pizza game, Bert's hanging up his hat. Spend a few hours with Bert was better than any pizza I could ever imagine. It's all full leaves now. Love the outside uh, the dining table. So we got raw iron, aluminum. No kidding. So they like us. You better believe it. Oh, I Why are you going to get them? Every, every year you got to scrape with a, with a brush for crying out loud and paint them to hell with that noise. There's no one like Bert Katz. It's like this place is almost like a true expression of you. The, the, well, probably, the place yeah, itself. yeah. I would say to a degree, I buy all the, this little stuff you see around here because I like it. They're responsible for three different pizzerias in Chicago. Yeah, basically, yeah. After uh, Gulliver's, then I opened up Pequod's. And we've been here 24 years in this store. What is a Burt Katz pizza? Uh, how would you describe it? You're asking Burt Katz, that's not fair. <laughs> The product that I've been making all these years is a matter of balance. The crust is, is dark and it's nice and uh, firm and, and kind of kind of crispy, mm -hmm. caramelized. You can actually see the air pockets in the dough, so it's a very light in texture. All the years that you've been operating here in Chicago, 
Do you think of yourself as a pizza legend? I don't look at it that way. I'm a, I'm a pizza maker. People laugh at pizza. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? You do it right. And let me tell you, you build up a following for years and yeah. years and years. It makes me feel like, wow, if I could be sort of half the guy that you are. It makes are. me either happier, makes you smarter to get out of it while you can. <laughs> yeah. There's two sides of the working coin. Just, just remember that. It really worked well for me. Uh, I'm very satisfied. We had a, a heck of a good run. Seems like the American dream to me. Or American nightmare. I mean, you know, dreams, nightmares, night hallucinations. I know it can be called a hell of a lot of, a lot of things. It's all perspective. It's all perspective, let me tell you. After meeting so many great people here, it's hard to believe that this is my first trip to Chicago. From deep dish to tavern style thin, there are no fast and hard rules here when it comes to pizza. There's just one constant, the great people. These people are truly the salt of the earth.